Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. I have to acknowledge the Dean's comments. And she was so accurate with saying the collaboration between the real world, so to speak, and academia is really, really important. Luca values that very highly. We really are appreciative of Rutgers. We're appreciative of Niklos, uh, Dr. Ellis, the PhD students, Alex and Ella. One of the really quick pieces of background is I'm a former academic, though Miklos uh, always introduces me, introduces me as an academic because he knows I can't get it out of my system at all. Um, and the, the a highlight of my week, so everyone knows, is that I speak with um, a variety of the Rutgers PhD students and faculty weekly. And it is a highlight because they're thinking constantly about new ways to think to think about to, in our topic today is fair value for crypto assets. They, they're thinking about this constantly. They're researching it, asking questions from us and what we see in the data and what we see going on to inform the research. And we really pay attention to the research. Their output is really, really important to us. So the collaboration here, we're very, very grateful for it, Luca. And thank you. Thank you, Miklos, for, for always sort of being, you know, present for in our uh, in our day to day and weekly showing up for me. So um, I'm going to just get us started. Our fair value of crypto assets is a really big issue, a really big topic, right? Because the FASB just decided that a requirement going forward will be that, by the way, some crypto assets should be measured at fair value, but not all. And I think there's a little bit of confusion out there about how much, you know, that fair that new fair value requirement will reach. And that's something that Luca again pays attention to and can help companies understand which crypto assets should be required to be at fair value and which shouldn't. And, and um, Dan and his team are really kind of at the forefront of helping uh, um, companies and helping us know which ones should be at fair value. One of the things you find when you get out there grappling with the fair value topic for crypto assets is ASC 820 has got great principles in it, and there's sort of a, a good theoretical foundation. But when you walk into the crypto assets world, where theory meets practice and the practical ramifications of the principles and how the crypto assets markets work is really, really different than the equity markets in some ways. In other ways, it's the same, but in many ways, it's different. And so let me just keep us moving forward because I know Dr. Ellis is very, very strict. So he will, he will cut us off and we want to leave time for questions if we can. So here's the sort of basic sort of structure of what we'll talk about today. And I will hand it off to, to Dan after I do a quick introduction of both of us. Dan is Lucas Chief Data Officer. He comes from um, IHS Market, very, very deeply ingrained over, over a great career around data, equities data, equities markets, and now the crypto markets. He was an armor crewman in the US, United States Army too. And thank you for that service. Um, I'm the global head of accounting solutions for Luca, former project lead at the FBI FRS, I EY auditor. I have to sort of read my, I don't know why I'm reading my bio like I don't know my own career, but, um, and then I've, I've done some other things um, on the sell side and buy side as well. So we're bringing all of that to, um, to Luca and here's some background on Luca. Do you want to talk about Luca's history a little bit and the crypto ecosystem? So Dan and I want to do this conversationally, so you know, so we'll go back and forth. Sure. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, so Luca was originally founded in 2014 um, for a crypto company that's you know, quite quite old. We have a joke internally that it's uh, essentially dinosaurs roamed the earth essentially at that time in crypto. But um, you can think of Luca as, if you're going to sum up Luca in really one or two sentences, think about Luca as a company that provides data and software. And what we really do is we help customers bridge the complexities of the blockchain and we help bridge that with uh, traditional business needs, right? So, so that's kind of what we do in, in, at a very top level. Uh, the business is really divided into, I would say, two main businesses. The first is our enterprise software. So you can think of this as software that's purpose-built to provide basically middle and back office type of solutions for people that are interacting with the crypto ecosystem. The second part of Luca is the enterprise data products. This is the products that, that I run. 
And these are traditional data products that you would see in traditional finance, um, but geared towards crypto. Uh, one thing that we really pride ourselves on is we've built the company from day one to be institutional grade. Right? So we have SAC 1, SAC 2, Type 2 audits for, I believe it's five years running now, and we'll continue to do so. But we really pride ourselves on coverage, quality, and really being institutional grade.